Welcome to SelfDiscoveryWisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Your Health is Your Choice right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Robert Johnson, known as the Mushroom Guy. Yes, we're going to be talking about mushrooms today and all the wonderful benefits they have. And I'm not talking about the magic mushrooms, only the magic of mushrooms. He's dedicated his life to this. That's the reason why he's called the Mushroom Guy. He's the CEO and the premium mushroom product called Micro Boost, a supplement manufacturer, custom capsule consultants. He's a cannabis and hemp industry veteran, health product expert, uh, psychedel activist, and a seasoned entrepreneur with 20 year track around uh, record around launching successful startup business and new emerging markets. His pioneering product and innovations and keen insights into the future of health marketing, marketplace have made him sought after consultant, a speaker and a co-ed contributor. His bylines have appeared in the Rolling Stone, Cannabis Industry Daily, MG Magazine, Natural Products Insider, and many, many more. But today we're going to be talking about the wonderful magic of mushrooms and exactly the health benefits that they have and how we can be a part of that because it, (coughs) excuse me, it truly, truly, Sorry, folks, I had a lovely little coughing spasm there right now, and I needed me some cordyceps. Many years ago, I found cordyceps, and as an asthmatic, I'm sorry, I sound a bit strained right now, the voice will come back to normal. It literally changed my life. I've been an asthmatic since two, and when I found these cordyceps products, I could breathe, I could run, I could do things that I never, ever had been able to do before. And unfortunately, the company that I was getting them from changed hands and so did the product and everything else. And I haven't been able to find it since. So I am going to, Robert, start off right now with the magic of cordyceps. <laughs> as it was, The coughing introduced it to us all already. So please do talk about that wonderful, wonderful mushroom. Yeah, thank you so much for that intro, Sarah. And I'm really an honor to be on your on your show today. Cordyceps is uh, is one of the mushrooms that really got me first interested in exploring functional mushrooms and and what they can do for people. Uh, as you say, they have uh, uh, strong uh, respiratory health uh, benefits as well as energy. And we work with uh, a bunch of athletes who use cordyceps as a, as a pre workout. Uh, we use it in our our brain. Uh, soft gel, which where you combine lion's mane extract and cordyceps extract. So I really consider that my entrepreneur fuel. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we make a ton of supplements, uh, and uh, and I use a, a handful of them daily. The brain being the first on my list. So with that combination of of lion's mane and cordyceps, you know, you have lion's mane, which is a, a nootropic. Uh, it's great for cognitive enhancement. It actually forms new brain cells in a process mm-hmm. called neurogenesis and, and new neural connections, uh, something that's called neuroplasticity. Uh, so what that means is it basically it rewires your brain. And, you know, while we uh, we focus only on functional mushrooms, I think a lot of the interest in mushrooms in general is because of the emerging uh, legal industry of psychedelic mushrooms as well. And the exposure that they're getting in the media uh, because of these publicly traded companies that are doing research and development into uh, psychedelics, uh, as well as you know, uh, hospitals like John Hopkins, the medical departments at Yale, Berkeley, Harvard, you know, all of the leading institutions in the country are all uh, doing, doing similar research to try and discover 
you know, what it is about these mushrooms that uh, can be so life changing. But lion's mane in particular does a lot of the same things that micro dosing psychedelics does. Uh, and that that rewiring of your brain, I think, is uh, it's not no supplement is a as a magic bullet. You mm -hmm. know, that's that's one thing that I see a lot of. Right. Not only do we manufacture supplements for ourselves, but for uh, 99 different uh, brands last year. And so, you know, I have insight into a lot of how products are developed, formulated and marketed. And uh, and one common thing in the supplement industry is, you know, painting whatever the ingredient is as a as a magical cure all. And I think, uh, you know, there there's if there's any danger of uh, of some of these emerging markets and the and plant medicine, it is, you know, framing framing the the actual ingredient as the the cure, but rather. I think it's a combination yeah. of people using them consciously and uh, and integrating it into their life. Mm. And so when uh, when people ask me, you know, what have mushrooms done for me? I, I explain it as it increases your awareness. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm I've always been interested in uh, in different religions and philosophy. And, you know, I think my my thought about it is that the more awareness you have, the more you have the ability to improve your life uh, one decision at a time. Yes. So, uh, you know, the mushroom root system is called mycelium, right? So mycelium are underneath our feet anywhere in the world that you go. Uh, they they almost look like uh, the our, our own wiring in our brain. And some some mycologists call call mycelium the the world wide web of mm -hmm. nature, mm -hmm. and that's because this this neural network that is under our feet and connects uh, ecosystems, forests can actually spread information throughout an ecosystem. Can spread nutrients uh, where they're needed. Uh, obviously, mushrooms do a lot of transformative work on in our forests. Right, they take uh, decomposing matter and uh, and transform it into new life, and so I think that mushrooms, you know, work on people similar to how they work in uh, the ecosystem of a forest, where not everyone who takes it will have the same experience because not everyone needs the same thing. Right. Right. And so, as uh, as you, I take lion's mane and. And uh, and microdose. Uh, I find that you know when I'll I'll have a, a moment like let's say you know for example um, you know I'm working I'm working with a customer on on something and there's uh, you know just some sort of uh, something that would cause frustration normally right and I think like uh, an increased awareness allows me to choose right rather than yeah. having my yes. feeling control me mm -hmm. uh, having the ability to really have that awareness and see like okay what path do i want to go down here and so it's up the think, cognitive uh, comprehension instead of just the reaction exactly right exactly right and so you know uh that may that makes it you know uh, a little more impetus on on the user mm -hmm. to to make those uh, decisions or, you know, when they see uh, more uh, or have more awareness of them that, you know, you still have to consciously choose, um, you know, that behavior change. Yeah. I, you know, um, I don't know if you've seen the Judy Dench's movie on trees uh, where they did a wonderful slow-mo of the fiber optics of the trees and how they integrate and talk with each other. And that is really what nature does. It talks to each other. It supports each other. There is no ego involved. There is no greed or profit or anything else. It's that they sustain each other because each other has a reason to be there. And everybody has a job to do and they know that they've got to get into that and nature supports each other in that growth. Um, hemp seed is another one that is very good for that as well. Um, and the thing is, if we stopped looking at the 
syntheticness of life and we start looking at nature that's always been provided the solution has always been provided for us but we haven't taken the time or what happens pharmaceutical takes a natural product and synthesizes it and then jacks up the price and and it just doesn't work because it's not the real product so there's always an answer to our problem but as you said it's the integration of it it's like um a little of this and a little of that complementing each other enhances the overall right mm -hmm. so you don't need a lot it's the right compilation it's the right uh, source put together of how it was going you know it i had a little esmera choke there at the beginning um but the brain if the brain is not functioning you know how can it talk to the muscles around the lungs to calm down we need the brain cognitive we need our thoughts the clarity the uh, understanding of it instead of reaction allowing ourselves to be present because when we are present that's where the answer lies so i think first and foremost before we do anything else the brain needs to be activated actually into a higher consciousness of awareness because you use that beautiful word awareness and I think we're all on an elevation of higher consciousness right now. And in understanding what we're really here for, what the elevation of our beingness um, is really, really important. And, you know, people took the psychedelic mushrooms to kind of tap into that consciousness, to tap into that awareness where nature has always given us some beautiful ingredients for us to be present with self in our health. You know, in our cognitive is of where we are right now, that will help us make the right choices and the right decisions. And perhaps the reason why we haven't been amongst many things is the, thing, the, the stuff what we put in our body that confuses it rather than enhances it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, one of the, the main catalysts for this, this you know, boom in interest in our inner world and our mm -hmm. our mental health uh, stemmed from the COVID-19 pandemic mm -hmm. right as, yes. a, as a global society we all had to you know take uh, take a break and Netflix and chill and <laughs> uh, you know look inward yes and I think that's why people are you know uh, the younger generations now like companies uh, are, don't understand, like they're offering more money to people and, you know, people are actually making choices based on mm. their happiness. Yes, uh, more about so time. <laughs> than the, the number of zeros on their yeah. paycheck. And so I, I think that, uh, you know, basically we all have uh, PTSD uh, from this past two years of, of living indoors and we're all looking for, you know, solutions. But it was a time, I think, you know, apart from obviously the death and everything else that it was there, economic, that has had to have restructure. But I think it was a gift of a pause. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so many people were on that treadmill of just doing the same old thing and wondering why they're, they're not getting better results or why they're unhappy and probably not even realizing they were unhappy. And this pause button came. And you know, after the initial frustration and anger, then it was, okay, take a breath, be with self. What do you really want out of life? And how many people have pivoted into another direction and most certainly become more health aware? Mm -hmm far more health aware. And this is why I'm sure your mushroom industry has grown quite considerably because people are going, this is why this show is called Your Health is Your Choice. Mm -hmm. Because what we put in our body, how we react to life, the stress that we put upon ourselves, we do it to ourselves. If we've put ourselves in that environment, we've done it to ourselves. So how do we rectify it? And that means that we've got to take some responsibility in looking into things like what you're offering. What can it do for me? How can it help me be healthier, have more brain function, breathe better, have more energy? How can I incorporate that into, a, into my life that I have a better lifestyle? And I think we're not looking at the quick fix. We're looking at lifestyle choices here. Yeah, and you know, I, I think that the criminalization of uh, of plants historically has really uh, stripped you know mm. Americans and and humans of uh, a ton of research. Yes, you know before before psychedelics were criminalized uh, ultimately by by Nixon in uh, in 1970, 
uh, you know, there was there was thousands of papers that were written by the psychological and medical communities about LSD and mm -hmm. mushrooms and and psychedelics. There was uh, six international conferences between 1950 and 1965. And, you know, obviously uh, our our science and uh, and R&D capabilities now 60 years later are tremendously higher. And so, you know, we're just, we're really behind. Uh, fortunately, there's a ton of businesses, uh, publicly traded companies, you know, like I said, these medical institutions that are now just pouring uh, investment dollars into understanding, uh, you know, what's, what's like you said, maybe these solutions that have been under mm -hmm. our feet uh, this whole time. And so I'm really grateful, uh, you know, that that silver lining of COVID, I think you're right, was that we all you know, pause and, mm -hmm. and hopefully almost like that, that uh, decision uh, that you have more awareness of with microdosing, like yes. as, a, as human race, um, you know, maybe we need to rethink the, the trajectory that we're on. Don't we? <laughs> In a major, major way. And you kind of, when you think about Nixon, uh, maybe it was a religious or righteous choice, or maybe it was pharmaceutical. Um, and, you know, this is one of the things I know that companies like her, like you are up against. Anything that then is taken from the earth that is then processed in a way to give back to us, which we are from the earth. <laughs> We're all part and parcel, fiber optically, the way we work. Um, pharmaceutical comes in and wants to capitalize on it. And the last thing they want is anything natural being a source of your wellness because it's their business to keep you ill. That's how they make a profit from it. So how much do you get a pushback from pharma? Well, I think uh, I think pharma is inevitable uh, in uh, in psychedelic medicine. And I think that, you know, any any psychedelic or uh, any medicine uh, <laughs> often is is mimicking nature right you know penicillin came from uh, from bacteria yep. kind of aspirin even is made from uh or a synthesized version of a uh, willow bark uh and you know having safe access to uh to people especially you know there's a ton of people out there that just won't try something unless a guy in a white lab coat mm -hmm. you know tells them that this is safe and i think that that's actually great that uh, the more people feel comfortable um you know trying these things and the more they're become accepted on a mainstream level there's there's never going to mushrooms are never going to go away you know they're no. very easy to cultivate they're very cheap to cultivate so if someone needs to have that that first experience uh with psychedelics in a, a medical setting you know they're charging three, four or five thousand dollars in some of these states like Oregon and Colorado that are that are you know now legalized for for medical use. And you know uh, if people are, are willing to pay that to, to try it, I think once they try it the first time and uh, you know get rid of some of that anxiety or mm -hmm. trepidation about that experience, then they're you know going to be more open to uh, you know much more affordable options uh, going forward. Uh, there's a ton of uh, a ton of variables that will play into you know how uh, pharma rolls out. I mean, the the biggest one is will insurance cover this? Yes, uh, yes, and and that's unfortunately I'm here in Canada, and that is um, unfortunately like with my condition, things like your product, uh, things even like acupuncture or massage therapy, none of that is covered. Um, for my condition, and unless they have a drug, that's it. It's uh, that's it as far as they go. And I think that is something that we really need to look at as a human race, and saying that you know we're given the power over to pharma uh, with the insurances, and uh, what we're really doing is making people sick when the solutions are right there. That if we invested in people's health and help them get what they need that's not just from pharma, uh, we would actually see a healthier race. With a healthier race, you're looking at people being happier. Uh, when they're happier, they're more productive, and uh, you just see more creativity. I mean, everybody wins. Everybody wins. So this holding people back from their own health 
and kind of dictating based on their income of what they can afford um, mm -hmm. is wrong because if, you know, it, our health is really the only thing we have. If we have good health, then we can go and do. But if we have bad health, it holds us back and then makes us a burden on society. And then people, you know, treat you differently. And it is a, a reoccurring thing. This is something I think that we desperately need is actually affordable solutions that we can incorporate in our diet and treat as food. It's part of the grocery bill instead of looking at it as, you know, medicine. It's part of the grocery bill of good eating. And with the kind of products you've got, you've got a coffee with all the mushroom ingredients in there. Tell us the benefit of that coffee because I am a coffee drinker. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's, let's start with uh, affordable. Right. Um, so, uh, depending on uh, on who you ask, the, the suggested daily dosage for functional mushrooms is anywhere from 800 milligrams to 3,000 milligrams. And so we wanted to put, you know, the, the max amount uh, that uh, that people suggest on a daily dose in a single serving of our coffee. Mm. So we have 3,000 milligrams of functional mushrooms per serving. Uh, that's over five different types of mushrooms that we work with. And they're all fruiting body uh, extracts. I'll, I'll get into that uh, in a little bit. But the, the five different mushrooms are lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, reishi, and turkey tail. So you're getting 600 milligrams of each of those individual mushrooms into a single serving. And whenever I develop a product, uh, you know, if it's something that uh, exists on the market already, I'll buy, you know, the five, 10 uh, most popular best-selling products on the market. And so I can really understand, you know, what, uh, what we're up against and, and what the, the competition is out there doing. And so there was a few things that I discovered. Uh, so uh, back to the fruiting body extract. So one thing uh, that uh, not a lot of people know is when mushrooms are cultivated commercially, they're grown on a starchy substrate, uh, like oats or corn or rice. And that, that substrate is inoculated with the spores. And from that, the mycelium root system grows. And, uh, and, and then once it's developed, the fruiting bodies or the stem and cap of the mushroom uh, and in some cases, like lion's mane, they look completely different, like uh, uh, a pom pom or uh, <laughs> something else. But that that <laughs> protrudes out of the substrate is the fruiting body. And so, when we make our products, we we harvest that fruiting body from the the grow substrate, make a concentrated extract version of it, and then you know can put a significant therapeutic dose of these functional mushrooms into a small form factor like a soft gel, a gummy, or a, you know, a tablespoon of, uh, of coffee. So what I was kind of surprised to learn is a lot of functional mushroom brands, they don't simply harvest the fruiting body, but they'll take that entire substrate block and pulverize it. Mm -hmm. and then they'll you know, encapsulate the, that uh, material into pills, put it in coffee, uh, and you're, you're having the benefits of the, the fruiting body and the mycelium, but consequently what you get is a lot of filler mm -hmm. because, you know, you're, and, and it confuses the customer, right? So you have a big bag or a big bottle of capsules that say it's 600 milligrams myceliated oats, you know, per, can, per pill, that, that oat content could be 75% right. of the actual volume. Uh, so, you know, not that oats are bad for you, but if you're, you're paying, you yeah. know, top dollar for, for mushrooms, um, you know, that's what you want to get. And so that was the first thing that we're always, you know, working with, with supplements. We want to make it effective. Obviously mm -hmm. you want to, you want to give something that, that people are going to realize the benefits and, uh, and keep coming back because of it. You know, you can only sell somebody a placebo for so long, usually yeah. once. <clears throat> Exactly. Uh, second, I, I noticed that a lot of these coffees, uh, they're all designed to be, you know, added to hot water, or hot almond milk, however you take it, and, uh, and stirred in. Well, a lot of these coffees just really don't dissolve well. Uh, and so there, you know, you have a bunch of, 
of uh, material at the bottom of your cup, kind of the sludge, mm -hmm. you know, that's, it, it's like, it's a poorly strained cowboy coffee. You're, you know, making, making over a campfire or something, just not, <laughs> not uh, super desirable or not, you know, enough that if someone's a daily coffee drinker, that they're going to make a switch to something that is just mm -hmm. uh, not as good. And then also the taste, you know, a lot of these, these brands have like a, a mushroomy or really earthy uh, taste to them. And so, you know, I wanted to, to make the best product by making something that dissolves, tastes great, and then it's going to give you a great therapeutic dose of mushrooms. So that's, uh, that's what we really worked on. And our, our flavors have been highly praised, uh, you know, both online and at uh, conventions and, and trade shows that we do. It dissolves perfectly in water. Uh, and in fact, we've been uh, here at the office making all sorts of like iced concoctions with it <laughs> this summer, uh, you know, adding, uh, adding fresh mint and uh, mm. beet, beet powder and, you know, all sorts of different stuff that can really uh, enhance it. I, I put a little bit of cinnamon and cardamom in my, in my coffee as well. So uh, it's, it's really become something that I even prefer to uh to you know highly caffeinated uh coffee it does have uh 55 milligrams of caffeine uh, per serving which is about you know a cup of earl gray tea uh, but the energy the natural energy from the cordyceps especially and then the the mm -hmm. just the brain being lit up by the lion's mane gives just a, a great natural energy without jitters uh and it's a, it's a, a dollar and 30 cents a, a cup, you know, for this, uh, this thing at our full price, but we often have uh, sales going on right now for all of June. We have like a, a pride month uh, sale going on right now. So you're, you're, you know, getting that, that delicious coffee for like a dollar a day. Right. And, you know, <clears throat> this is another point I want to point out, you know, we've become very much a society of that more is more instead of less is more. And you, you know, when you're buying in the groceries, people are buying more and more food and content that is feeding them less. So they're eating more, but it's the nutrients that they're getting out of them is less. So, you know, a lot of people are dying um, of obesity that are actually malnutritioned because they're not getting the right ingredients. So when you start getting good stuff in your body, your body doesn't require so much bulk. It's being satisfied. It's being fed. It's being fortified. So you actually find that you what you're eating is less because your body has more energy from the good ingredients. So people will look at it and go, yes, but I can get cheap coffee at such and such. But how much of that do you have to drink for it to give you the same type of energy? <clears throat> and does it, you know, does it in the end? Is it actually feeding you nutrients? Is it just as you said, watered down flavor? Right. So sometimes we have to change the way our thinking and look at, yes, I may appear to be paying out more for the good nutrition, but in the end, I'm paying less on the grocery bill and I'm getting more benefit. So there's a huge mindset that needs to change around our own health and our own well-being of where we are investing the money. I couldn't agree with you more. Couldn't agree with you more. I mean, even in uh, in production is the same way you know uh, there's like a saying that you know like poor people really can't afford to uh to buy the cheapest microwave mm -hmm. right you know that's, if that's all you can afford at the time but you have to have you know five of them uh, for the lifespan of the the nicer microwave that costs twice as much well you know when you do the math in the long run you know you're really paying a lot more when you think you're saving yeah and so, you know, save up for the good product, right? <laughs> Instead, um, you know, let's uh, let's look at this other product you have, the Wake Up Wellness. Tell us about this. Yeah. So, because uh, because these are this this product is you know be gaining lots of uh, of new uh, interest and in people that don't know a ton about mushrooms you know we're trying to educate people but not overwhelm them mm -hmm. and, and keep it keep it simple so when we're you know telling people about the five different types of mushrooms we work with 
a lot of people, they, they just like, well, I'm not sure which mushroom is right for me. I want the pill with all of them in it. Right. And, uh, that's uh, that's what we did with the, the wellness formula. So each pill has 1500 milligrams of functional mushrooms spread over the, the five different mushrooms. So 300 milligrams each. So if you take two of the wellness pills, you're getting exactly the same uh, dosage of mushrooms that you would get from the one cup of coffee. Uh, so it's just uh, depending on the, the form factor that you know, is most convenient uh, for you. You know, I, I Can you I take both? Can you take a wellness and have a cup of coffee or is it too much? Of course, of course. Yeah, you can't you can't overdose on uh, on functional mushrooms. Uh, and I've tried. <laughs> so again but it's a natural product right i mean i absolutely one of the things that's always in uh i'm a vegetarian so i have six vegetables a night and mushrooms has to be one of them whatever type of mushroom and i love it when i get a melody of mushrooms and cook those together with garlic and a little butter um but you know the, they always say that for every disease that is given just a few feet away is the answer Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, that we look at diseases, uh, you know, like cancer, like various other type of things. And you think, of course, you know, obesity for one, you know, diabetes, too. Um, we know that this is kind of coming again from, again, the diet. It's coming from stress. It's coming from all the um, chemicals that are in all of our foods and everything. And we, you know, as we're busy consuming these things, we don't realize that it's building up and building up until the body says, I can't take any more. So again, the investment in our wellness in to make sure that we are actually getting something that's sustaining our body, that is giving our body is incredible, absolutely incredible machine. It really is. But it needs the right fuel. It's like putting the right gas in your car. It needs the right fuel in order to optimize. So I think that an awful lot of people would be a lot more healthier if they decided to actually put more healthy ingredients in them uh, rather than you know, it's, oh, now I've got type 2 diabetes, I've got to go the insulin way. No, you can change that with diet right away, all right? And the whole mindset around what you eat, what you do, and everything else is that we've been conditioned, I think, that, you know, um, to go down that route, which is clearly not serving us because we're seeing more and more of these diseases. Instead of your health is your choice, Go down this road, put healthier things in your body, and then all of a sudden you find, you know, your your brain is working, you've got energy, uh, you've the things that you haven't been able to do in years, you can now do. As I said, when I started on the cordyceps as an asthmatic of so many years, I had three young children. Well, suddenly I could keep up with them instead of having somebody else to run after them because I would have an asthma attack, right? It, beautiful ingredient that literally saved me. Now you've put it in coffee or you've put it into a wellness pill or you can take both if you're needing more energy. Where does the brain want come in? How does that work? Yeah, so uh, the brain, we just focus on uh, lion's mane and cordyceps. And like we were talking about the, the cognitive enhancing properties of, of lion's mane with the new brain cell growth, new neural connection. I think that the, it's the... Well, I know that uh, SEO wise, that's the most searched uh, of all the functional mushrooms. I think it's cool name uh, might have something to do with it, but also because of uh, the baby boomer generation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're, they're looking for cognitive <laughs> and enhancing yes. new tropics, you know, they want to have your brain function like you're, you know, 40 years old for the rest of your life. And, yes. <laughs> um, you know, personally I've had, uh, uh, two uh, grandparents that had uh, Alzheimer's mm. and, and dementia. And, and I think that's extremely common uh, for, you know, the baby boomers uh, parents. And, you know, it's so, uh, and so heart sad and, and uh, disheartening to see a loved one go through that, that I think, you know, we got a whole generation of people that are trying to avoid it at all costs. Yes. Uh, and so that, and, and now looking to alternative uh, solutions as well, because uh, as much money as the pharmaceutical companies make, you know, they're really getting a bad reputation. You know, they make a yep. lot of product that uh, that kill people. Exactly. Um, exactly. And, um, I, I know I'm a baby boomer. I'm 68. 
And mm -hmm. I've interviewed an enormous amount of people in the 70s and 80s and even 90s. And it's like, uh, well, you know, I finally got it right and I'm doing what I love. Mm -hmm. Right. I've done everything that was expected of me. And I had the 2.2 kids picket fence and this and that. And now I'm at this like, hey, this is my choice, what I do, and what I want to do. And there's an exuberance about them, a love of life. And I, I know there is no age barrier. of Now you've got to retire and sit on the porch and knit. And it's to hell with that. I've got things to do and they're out there doing them. And the worst thing to happen to them is a, a lack of energy that doesn't support that or the brain turning on them and not supporting them. So, you know, my age group, most certainly, we need this because we need to keep that brain function going because finally we're doing what we love in life and we want to be able to keep on doing it. Absolutely, yeah. And I, you know, straddle between like Gen X and, uh, and millennials and, you know, both of these uh, generations are still, you know, under uh, enormous pressure to be productive constantly. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's not it's not exclusive uh, to the older generation that right. we're all, to, you know, have our, our brain function at its at its highest potential. What's the youngest that can take this? Uh, kids, kids can take it. We make a, we make a, a gummy that's like a great, uh, you know, intro uh, for for younger people. I mean, adults al alike too. gummies have become extremely popular across all supplement categories. I think it's got that, you know, Pavlovian uh, sort of uh, hit, you know, that uh, adults and, and kids alike, you know, like to have the the sugar and the sweetness as a little reward for, for taking their health supplements. Um, but, uh, you know, we've even, we've talked about maybe even making a smaller snack pack, you know, for, for school lunches and, and the like. So, uh, there's, there's now no... is 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 that a, a limit to what they can take? You know how young or, or, and have you tried it on any children with um, some challenges like Down syndrome or autism? Yeah, that's a that's an interesting question. Uh, I, personally, I I haven't heard any anecdotes about that uh, specifically. I mean, uh, throughout my career, I've worked with uh, with children uh, and uh, CBD. Mm -hmm. um, we used to we used to donate CBD to UC Davis uh, at my previous company uh, for kids who had epilepsy and mm -hmm. you know seizures, um, and so yeah, there's definitely more more studies to be done about that. But you know, uh, functional mushrooms have a ton of the same uh, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, anti. Lots of different uh, uh, properties, and so uh, yeah, I would I would always you know consult your doctor, you know do your do your. But own... that's the trouble is consult your doctor. Your doctors don't know any of this stuff. They don't work with natural products. They would consult your doctor. The doctor is in the twilight zone when it comes to this. <laughs> Truly, uh -huh. honestly, I introduced my doctor to cordyceps when he suddenly found, my God, your asthma is so much better. What are you doing? And then he says, oh, you you will take my business away from me. That was his actual response, wow. right? Until later, I went in some months later with my daughter over something. And he said, and have you heard of echinacea and this and that? Whereas before he was completely against it. But they're not trained in the, any of the alternative whatsoever, which we, we, I laugh at it being called the alternative because it's been around since the beginning of time. Exactly. Western medicine is actually the alternative. Exactly. You know, and uh, I, it, it's, uh, it's something that I talk about in my writing a lot. Uh, you know, I, I think that I've, there, uh, if you look at some artist's work, you'll find that essentially they, they end up writing or painting or, or making music about the same subject over and over and over again, right? Whether that's Martin Scorsese or uh, mm -hmm. or Hunter Thompson, and and the one thing that uh, you know, as an activist for these emerging plant medicines, that really um, I I like to point out is is the hypocrisy or you know the people writing and spreading information that is just clearly about their own financial self-interest. Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's not good business for a supplement manufacturer to say like, 
these are supplements. They're not substitutes. And there's really no substitute for a healthy diet, exercise, uh, et cetera. Right. You know, uh, rather if I was just, you know, trying to make the most money, I would say, you know, you never need to leave your couch. You just have our coffee and <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll be able to predict the stock market. And, uh, <laughs> I will, will love you. Uh, but, uh, but that's, that's, that's not the case. And shooting straight with people, I think, is is actually the really good long term business. Yes, um, you become a trusted source. You're not just. We're, uh, we're tired of the fake news. We're tired of the big flash and dash and fraud. You know, we've become so buyer beware. We really have, and this is why you know I do these shows. We're talking to people from the source. You know, you are you are the root of the of the literally the root of the of the whole production here and it isn't kind of the flash sales pitch and the the nice presentation you know a, all very nice that can draw people in but people want to know is it real is it safe i'm so tired of the wool being pulled over my eyes i want to know it's safe and because you've heard you know um the magic mushrooms you know why was lsd banned well, yes, you did have people who overdosed on it because they were taking it in a different form and probably not taking it in overdosing on it and dying from it. God knows what else they were taking along with it as well. But when things are put together in the right formation and you use them in the right way, then they can only have health benefits. It's again, you know, your health is your choice. Be aware of what you're taking in and how you're meant to take it and what is the source of it. Don't just, you know, the flashy advertising. Ask the questions. Go to the company directly through the Internet. Ask your questions. If they're cagey in answering, then that's a different uh, question altogether. But being open and upfront with your product, that gives people security in like, okay, I feel safe in trying this because that really is a problem today, isn't it? People knowing what to trust. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I've got a new uh, article that is like uh, being edited right now for uh, for Rolling Stone. And it's about uh, other entheogens or, or psychedelics that are you know being researched like MDMA and LSD and, and mescaline. And uh, in part of the opening article or the opening uh, paragraph, I, you know, just state how uh, LSD mushrooms, even cannabis, were all schedule one drugs, uh, where cocaine and methamphetamine are schedule two, which means that the federal government thinks that those are safer than cannabis. And the, the editor of Rolling Stone put a note on there. They're like, this can't be right. No. <laughs> no actually, actually it is who's profiting from this <laughs> yeah and you know like when uh when when nixon uh uh criminalized these things you know what who were the people that were taking them at the mm. time right you know they were the anti-war protesters yes. the anti-materialism hippies and beatniks and the anti-capitalist you know these these drugs were we're opening people's eyes mm -hmm. in a way that was not good for for the the American war machine or uh, or keeping people you know conformed uh, and, and it was brilliant them. for creativity. Alice in Wonderland and some of the best music <laughs> coming out of the sixties and seventies. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah, that's that's what I write about all the time. Is like qui bono? Who who benefits? You mm -hmm. know, and it's uh, it's really interesting. Uh, and, and saddening that, uh, you know, the same people that fight for uh, the legalization of these plants, like as soon as their company is now uh, set to be at the front of the line to receive the profits for it, they'll do the same sort of fear mongering that mm -hmm. uh, they fought against, uh, you know, uh, the month prior and say, right. well, you know, without without getting it from us or or mm -hmm. taking psychedelics with the you know, a medical professional, then, you know, it's completely unsafe and unregulated. And you can't trust it. And you don't know what it's in it. It's like, it's the same plant uh, that we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And where do you think that is coming from? Do you think it's all profit driven? Do you think it's like, make people afraid of that one, then people will come to this one? You know, again, it is 
it is up to us to take responsibility from where we get and what and whom we listen to but you know this whole kind of propaganda or the sales pitch of bashing one to sell the other is you think that's just become a mainstream practice Oh, I mean, absolutely. And it, it is all, and le at least in my opinion, it all leads back to uh, financial interest um, in, uh, in hemp. Uh, you know, we have, I think there's only 12 states in the U.S. now that don't have some form of legal or medical uh, cannabis. And uh, in the past three years, the proliferation of some psychoactive hemp derived cannabinoids that are legal because of the 2018 hemp farm bill yes. have really they've really cut into the profits of uh, of states that are you know trying to sell cannabis through uh, through dispensaries and highly taxed and and regulated and so yeah we we saw a ton of that over the past couple of years where the the same cannabis activists that that fought so hard to get their state legalized are now seeing uh, you know competition that's that's cutting into their books and and yeah, it's just it's it's so disingenuous to me to just have that that single note argument where it's just like, you know, well, what about the children? It's like well, you went from you went from <laughs> Timothy Leary to Nancy Reagan in uh, you know, 30 days. Yeah, um, I actually did a show on that. I think it's the Colorado, um, something on the um, hemp farming where people would grow hemp and then it would be sold either, you know, to farms or for just dispensary use and that people could join the co-op as, as farmers of hemp uh, for the disp distribution of it. So um, uh, an, another way of people being a part of it without, you know, actually in the manufacturing of it. So uh, it's very interesting. And I think what I find really, really interesting is any time that we discover something that is na natural, that nature has had for us, that has been used for thousands of years. And let's face it, mushroom use in some form or other has been around for thousands of years, used in medicine. Um, but that the moment it becomes kind of mainstream and not just, you know, on our plate, that it becomes something that is medicinal for us, then it, you know, there's somebody out there to make it the enemy. And again, that it is like, why? If you're willing to eat it on your plate, somebody's processed it in a way that now you're just getting more of the nutrient in a more concentrated uh, way because uh, how much would you have to eat on your plate to get what you're giving either in the in the chewies in the capsule or in the coffee one hell of a lot of mushrooms to get the same benefit and had a great deal higher cost has see have you seen the price of mushrooms lately <laughs> for sure for sure well yeah i'm i uh I'm I'm just endlessly fascinated by mushrooms. You know, I just got back from a, a conference in Denver. There was a, a psychedelic mushroom conference there uh, <clears throat> by Maps. There's twelve thousand attendees, and just the 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 minds and the passion uh, behind uh, you know producing products, researching, understanding, testing them uh, is is so exciting to me. And I think it's only the tip of the iceberg of what we understand mm -hmm. about what mushrooms can do for us and then how we're going to effectively, you know, integrate it uh, into our into our lifestyle. And, you know, uh, there are some theories that mushrooms are the source of life on Earth. Have mm -hmm. you heard this, one, Sarah? Yeah, I mean, it's and mushrooms can grow in any soil, can't it? In some form right. or other. Uh, and uh, you know, there's there's theories that uh, originally, you know, there was uh, there was life, and like around the time of the Precambrian explosion, there's life under the sea, but uh, the surface of Earth was rock, mm -hmm. and that uh, mushroom spores, which may have traveled here from uh, outer space, which because they can survive in the vacuum of space, they can they can ride on an asteroid into the planet, and the theory is that you know the asteroid hit the planet. And the the hyphae, or which is the the mycelium, the spreading mycelium of the mushroom, over the course of tens of millions of years, broke up this rock that was on the surface of the earth, transformed it into soil, and that's how plants and then you know life on earth, um, you know first first began to flourish, and I think that uh, you know some of the the research that's being done now on you know how it can transform our waste and trash um mm -hmm. 
uh, oil spills, et cetera, you know, could really save uh, some of the, the cataclysmic uh, and eventualities we might be hurtling towards. But you haven't seen the show The Last of Us then? Oh, The Last of Us. <laughs> 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 so, so, you know, be, because you brought up uh, cordyceps and that's the, you know, there's a fictional strain of cordyceps that's the subject of that HBO show. There is over 400 different types of cordyceps species. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, cordyceps senescus and militaris that are the two that are most commonly used in supplements. Um, but the, the idea for, I think, the, the video game originally, right, of uh, The Last of Us is this particular strain of cordyceps that is found in the Amazon jungle, yeah. uh, which, which can, uh, can colonize an ant's brain and actually can control an ant like a remote control car mm -hmm. and like where it goes and will have the, the ant with the, the spores, you know, go back into the, the colony and, uh, and spread uh, the mushroom to, to the rest of the, the other ant populace so while it is a completely fictional uh strain of cordyceps they're you know one of the reasons why i think mushrooms and humans uh work so symbiotically together is because we uh, have a lot of the same um properties mm -hmm. uh, but but uh so far uh mushrooms cannot uh grow and live in the human body because they can't survive the temperatures of uh oh. internal uh, uh, body. However, there are some theories that, you know, as the Earth's temperature continues to rise, then gradually mushrooms will right. evolve. Yeah. Because, you know, nature always finds a way. So mushrooms may rule in the end. I was first introduced to the cordyceps, as I said, through this last company, but the story around it was is that um, up in the higher elevations, uh, farmers were noticing their sheep were eating these cordyceps and, uh, you know, were kind of healthy and notice all sorts of responses from it. And that the Chinese um, Olympic uh, um, arena took these cordyceps and gave them to their athletes and their athletes were breaking records at the Olympics and they were doing drug testing and found absolutely no drugs in them, but they were breaking records by quite substantial especially this running team or this women's running team. And that's kind of what put it on the map at the time of what these cordyceps could do because they do uh, enforce the lungs and they do, it does give energy throughout the body, kind of oxygenates the body, right? Gives the body oxygen so that it actually has the power to do something. So that uh, that's how I was first introduced to it. And, <clears throat> and immediately, of course, they tried to ban it as a substance, right, where it is just, again, natural, because what people don't understand, they block, or if there's profit to be made elsewhere or whatever, you know, it's the human nature there. But um, we're a long way away from just, just the, <laughs> the, the few of us. Um, I think what we need to look at, um, Earth provides us everything we need. And whereas in the past, People were had an attunement to the earth. They grew their own food. They, you know, they sold at market with this farmer and that farmer. And people actually understood the benefits, maybe not the chemistry, so to speak, but the benefits of each of these foods. And it became a part of their diet. And uh, we went away from that when we went to processed food. And, and an awful lot of kids probably think their food grows in supermarkets. They've mm -hmm. never been to a farm. They've never been to a farmer's market. They've never actually seen food with the soil attached to it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of re-education that needs to come out there throughout to, to show people that it um, that you know nature provides for us. Let's not contaminate nature. Let's harness nature. Because nature and us are meant to be at one with each other, not at odds. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's why I, I despite you know I, working in an emerging industry is not uh, not the easiest uh, career. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really you know my 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 passion and uh, and and desire for change that I really want to you know create and and you know be the change that I want to see in the world and you know people like you uh, are are our exact uh, 
you know, target, uh, same mission. you know, <laughs> yes. same, same allies, uh, for, for our <clears throat> own personal health and the health of our, our planet and our, our society. Yeah, and that's the thing is I'm constantly saying to people, be the change you seek. And, you know, if there's something in your life that's not working, don't wait for somebody else to, to change out there and then tell you what to do. Seek out what you need to do. And that comes very much back to what we were saying earlier. Be present with self. Slow down. Stop chasing. Uh, be present with self and know what you need. Your body will always tell you. And then, okay, well, I'm sluggish or my brain is foggish or, you know, the lungs aren't breathing as well, especially after COVID. So many people have now the COVID lung uh, where they get out. Of, my poor daughter had COVID three times. Mm. Um, and so this definitely would benefit her considerably on, you know, getting back her lung power. And <clears throat> and the brain fog, how many people ended up with brain fog? And how, how many of us walk around with brain fog, which is called overloading? We overload ourselves with everything. We don't know how to slow down and just be present in the moment with what we're doing right now. And if we have something that makes us more aware, more present, more focused on what's right in front of us instead of chasing an illusion, you know, while we're helping our health, we can help our mindset and how we look at life and how we are actually going to participate in life and actually create a different society, not a society based on sickness and lag, but based on fortitude and abundance. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, well, we're a part of it. I'm a part of it by bringing you, you know, uh, to the people who don't know yet are aware of what's going on. And you're a part of it. You were a you know, part of the CB uh, cannabis uh, arena beforehand. So you are, you are a person that's not afraid to go into arenas that are, that are, you know, conflicting to people. Um, but you know, making it into a point of see the benefits, see the benefits. Don't be afraid of the benefits. If you know, if it was so bad for us, and mushrooms are so prevalent everywhere in the world, how come we haven't been killed by? you know, mushrooms attacking us, or how come it hasn't contaminated all our other foods? It's the one food that really has an, an amazing amount of sustain sustainability. And if it can sustain in the earth and grow and talk to one another, imagine what it could do with our own integral system. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, I've always been, uh, you know, kind of uh, a free thinker or, or tried to be. And so, you know, when I first uh, when I first tried mushrooms or cannabis, uh, you know, I had the the same sort of realization. I was like, "How could this be illegal?" You know, how, you know this uh, this euphoria, this great feeling, uh, this happiness, this connection uh, with others. I mean, I think that that's that's really what it's all about for me. You know, mm. it's not it's not about the substances. It's about the the quality of life that we have with ourselves and uh, and that we have with others it's not the high to run away from life it's the high of realization of actually how to live life exactly exactly right and again you know how many people become addicted to whatever in life chocolate this that whatever because it's something that takes them away from a life that they're not happy in when you open up and you really do see things on a much different plane, much different dimensional thinking, you see the benefits of life and you in it. And therefore you have more to go towards, more to, to grow to. So we need those openers. You know, as human beings, we've shut ourselves down and we need to open ourselves up and allow ourselves to kind of explore what will help me rise up to a higher consciousness. And when you're in that higher consciousness, it's like, I am now aware what else is out there. Creativity can grow abundance. And creativity doesn't grow in the adversity of lack or hate or greed. Creativity grows in the abundance of all those fiber optics going out and meeting and collaborating and working together. So that's really important. Quickly talk about immunity, the immunity pill that you have. Yeah, so immunity uh, focuses on uh, reishi, chaga, and turkey tail. Uh, these three mushrooms 
are are the ones that uh, that we found have the, the best uh, anti-inflammation and uh, and immunity boosting properties. Uh, and so that's we put those all you know particularly together. Uh, 1500 milligrams of pill, just like all of our other ones, but that's split between those three particular mushrooms. You know, reishi, uh, we found is, is really great for uh, anti-anxiety mm -hmm. as well. It helps people to sleep. Uh, chaga has a, a, amazing antioxidant uh, properties and turkey tail. And, and if your listeners uh, are interested, there's an amazing TED talk uh, by Paul Stamets. He's uh, you know, probably the, the most well-known mycologist in North America. And his mother had stage four breast cancer and he gave her high doses of turkey tail. She was given like, you know, less than a year to live and uh, went into complete remission and, and lived, you know, many years uh, after expected just from turkey tail mushrooms. So, you know, some of it's, uh, and, and because of, you know, the, the powers that be or, you know, the money, Right. These uh, these sort of m mushrooms and, and supplements, they're not FDA approved. Right. And, you know, if we if we wrote one word on our website about, you know, turkey tail can cure cancer, you know, we'd have a, a warning letter from the FDA. Yes, it enhances. I remember it. It enhances. <laughs> you can't use the word cure. Enhances. <laughs> right. But uh, but, you know, the, the, the information is out there. Um, and uh, and so we just. You know, try and put it together in a way that you know is packaged and and uh, you know telling people you know what it's good for uh, without making any medical claims, which is yeah. just a kind of a silly tightrope that you have yeah. to walk. Unfortunately, um, yes. Yeah, still, if you drank the coffee and you took each one of these pills every day, um, are you is uh, is that too much? Are you going to be peeing away most of it because the body can't take it all in, or can the body absorb all of that? Yeah, that's a really great question. Uh, I, I mean, three thousand milligrams is like the 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 high end of what people suggest. You know, if uh, you're you're Paul Stamets' mom and you're you know trying to uh, to beat something very specific, you know, I'm sure that much much higher amounts um, would still be beneficial to you. Um, but, but you're right. There is only so much that the, that the body absorbs. And so, you know, and also, uh, based on budget too, you yeah. know, if you, if 3000 milligrams is what you need, you know, the, no need to, uh, to consume 15,000 milligrams right. and, and five times the price. Now, if somebody's starting off and they want to get one of your products and maybe their health is a little, you know, sluggish or whatever at the present moment, which one would you say is a good one to go to? How long to be on that one before then going to another? Yeah, I mean, uh, depending on uh, specifically what you're looking for, you know, the the soft gels, we all try and make them, um, you know, title them for exactly what uh, what people are want, whether that's brain, immunity, uh, or wellness. But our, our coffee has quickly become our best selling products. You know, it's, uh, and I think a large part of, you know, integrating plant medicine into your life is uh, is making a, a good habit of it mm -hmm. and because because coffee is such a habitual thing mm -hmm. for for so many people i think that's why we found the adoption of that um so much easier for folks now if you're used to uh taking pills and and supplements the the soft gels are a super portable and and great way to to get your your mushrooms and your daily diet but uh, but I recommend that you know if people are trying something for the first time, try the coffee uh, because it, it tastes like uh, delicious uh, hot chocolate and is uh, is delivering those those benefits that you're gonna feel you know the first cup you have, and then by the time you've been taking it for a week or two and you get through you know your whole bag, uh, we're we're really confident that you know you're gonna be buying more for yourself and for your grandma and your aunts and uncles and and everybody else. Could you take the coffee and the immunity at the same time? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, I I take I take the brain. I have a couple cups of coffee. Uh, you know, whenever I uh, like to reward myself, my my favorite gummy is actually the cordyceps. It's a uh, it's an orange flavored um, uh, mushroom naturally. So we made the the flavor an orange cream. Uh, anyways, it's just my my uh my favorite one you know it gives me like a little extra energy boost throughout the day so 
you know, if, uh, if, if you have, uh, the, the budget for it, you know, like I, like I say, I'm not going to just tell you, yeah, just eat the, eat the whole bag of gummies, you know, five times a day, that would be best for my pocketbook. But, uh, but, you know, just, uh, I, I encourage everybody to, to start with the, you know, the suggested serving size and, you know, really give it a few days, uh, to see how it, it makes you feel. Right. And, you know, I think that's a, you know, really wise thing is that, you know, start off with the coffee. If you're not a coffee drinker, maybe start off with the immunity. Everybody's immunity needs boosting. Or maybe you are suffering a little bit of brain fog, or maybe you're a student and exams are coming up and you need a boost there. So what is it that you particularly need at this time? Um, and then, you know, start off with that. And if you take the pills and a cup of coffee a day, that's only going to enhance you. Uh, but it is, Put the one foot forward, start taking something, start taking something. And, you know, realize that it's not, you know, the quick fix. The more it's got to undo in your body, the longer it's going to take to show you the benefits. So, you know, allow your body to receive it and get to work on the repair on whatever it's needing to do. And generally, our bodies change cellular every three months. So sometimes I always say, give something three months for the body's restructure to incorporate this and to really truly see the benefits of it because we're so used to instant no you've got to give things time got to give things time right so where do they buy all these gorgeous things uh, where are you in the world are you just in the states or are you everywhere uh, we're in the United States right now. Uh, we ship to all, all 50 states, and it's uh, microboost.com, M-Y-C-R-O, uh, boost, uh, that spelling from, taken from uh, mycology, mm -hmm. but uh, microboost.com. If you are having, uh, you know, decision fatigue about what to, to try first, I know we have a discounted bundle of, of all of our products on the website, too, and, and there is... Uh, uh, discount code up there uh, right now as well. And uh, and of course, you know, when they go to um, selfdiscoverywisdom.com, all they need to do is put in Robert Johnson, the mushroom guy, but Robert Johnson, and all the other things uh, coming up, you know, the things that you've written on, the articles and everything else, more detail is there as well. Uh, the article you wrote for the Metropolitan is here. And you can send me the link to the article for the Rolling Stone too, and I'll put that in there as well. And of course, you are on LinkedIn and you're also on Instagram. And Instagram is micro boost. And uh, um, when will you be in Canada? Because I want some of this stuff. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And we'll send you a, a, a package uh, uh, for you for sure. But, you know, commercially available, hopefully by the end of the year. Great. Wonderful. I know Canada is harder to come into because uh, we have much stricter rules um, and things have to go through this, you know, jumping through the hoops. And sometimes that's good because that means that we're not going to get poor quality in here. And other times it can hold things up. So I really do pray you're here. And you hope to be around the world? Of course. I mean, uh, we are we're, we're a brand designed for, for everybody. And so we want uh, as many people on the planet to be able to try it. Definitely. It's a natural product that's been growing for thousands of years and had medicinal use for thousands of years. The, you're not presenting anything new. What you're doing, though, is putting it together harmoniously so that it can really target what it needs to do in your body and help the body in whichever way it needs to work and make it easy for people to take. And that's really, really important. I want to get my grandsons on the gummies too. So um, get them up boosting their, not that necessary. They need more energy, but just, you know, the general health process of our children um, because of the environment, because of what they're around all the time. I think the more we can boost our children's immune system and give them the strength that they need in their cellular structure, the less illnesses they're going to be prone to as they grow, because otherwise they're little Petri dishes as they grow up. <laughs> so let's build that immune system. Thank you so much for being here, Robert. I really enjoyed this conversation. I love what you're doing. I really do celebrate people like you that are that there is no box. You're not afraid to to look at things um, 
for what they are and bring us what we need even before we realize we need it and i pray that you're not only going to be in canada but around the world the doors will open up for you very soon and for those lucky ones that are in america whether it's the gummies, whether it's the coffee, whether you just get the cordyceps highly. If you have any lung problems whatsoever, go and get the cordyceps. Brain boost. Who doesn't need a brain boost? If your immunity has been sluggish, try something, but give it the time to boost up and really work for you. Um, and then I promise you, you will see the difference because uh, mushrooms are great <laughs> in any format so thanks so much for being with us here today Robert. thank you sarah i really appreciate the the message that your podcast is bringing to people ah folks there's always a solution we have just got to open our minds listen learn and apply until next time bye for now we hope that you enjoyed the show there are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.